Good morning and welcome to our online service this morning. We're glad you could join us. Hope you had a wonderful week and that this is the start of a great week ahead of you. We want to welcome our guests this morning. So if you're new to us today or just over the last number of weeks you're new to us, we'd like you to help us out. We want to know who you are. We want to know that you've been watching. So if you could take your phone and text the word welcome to our church phone number at 416-267-1189. It'll start a little back and forth chat. I think they get two or three more texts and if that way we can find out who you are. We want to know everybody that's with us today. So if you're a regular church family member here at Highway, get involved in the chats and get involved that way so that we know you're here with us and so we can say hi and others can say hi and you can connect with one another this morning. As well, prayer requests are being taken. There's a button in the online service that you can click for prayer. Or if you're on, watching on Facebook this morning, you can just send us a private message and we will have prayer for you uh, ongoing as the service is going. As well, we just want to remind you of one upcoming thing, and that's our three days of prayer, which is coming up October 6th to 8th. Um, more information will be on the website this, by this week, and you can find it there. Our website is Highway gospel.ca and there'll be an online um, prayer guide for the upcoming three days of prayer in October. Before we start this morning, we just want to open in a word of prayer and ask God to speak into our lives today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning that no matter where we're watching, you are with us because you reside in us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, your word tells us two or three are, where two or three are gathered and we are gathered even in this online format, you know our hearts are gathered together. So Lord, by your spirit this morning, move in our lives. Help us to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Help us to hear your word and accept your word today and be changed by your word today. Holy Spirit, wherever we're at right now, just move in our lives and touch us and change us today, making us more like you, Jesus. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won for you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never I'm 
social media challenges pop up all the time. Some for enjoyment, some for a good cause, others are just plain dangerous. What if you tried a new challenge? One that could transform your life, community, and the world. What if you spent 40 days studying Jesus' words and applying his teachings to everyday life? All focused on five principles. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going like Christ. So what are you waiting for? Let's join together and take the Red Letter Challenge. I'm so excited to tell you about our upcoming church-wide campaign starting in October. It's called the Red Letter Challenge. It will start October the 18th and go for 40 days, that's six weeks, until November the 27th. We're going to look at the words of Jesus and learn how to put them into practice. In Luke 11:28, Jesus said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. During the Red Letter Challenge, you are going to be introduced to five key principles. 
being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. Each week, we will study one of these principles, starting with our Sunday teaching. So tune in online or in person. There is also this wonderful devotional notebook that will walk you through every day of the challenge. Each day, you will see a quote directly from the mouth of Jesus. That quotation will be followed by a devotional, one or more companion Bible readings, and a challenge of how you might live out the specific words on that day. Some will be rather broad and some will be a little more specific. Each day you will be encouraged to complete this challenge. Now we have ordered a number of these books for you and we're making them available you, to you for just a suggested donation of $10. If I'm going to be honest with you, the books cost a little more than double that, but our church leadership so believes in your spiritual development that we want to help you with the cost of this book. If the suggested donation is too much or too difficult for you at this time, we totally understand. We still want to make a book available to you. So just let us know that you need a book. Or maybe you're listening and you would feel that, you know what, I want to invest in some people too, and you want to give a bigger donation to help those who need help, you could do that too. Now, let me tell you how you can simply get a book. You, If you're in an in-person service, you could just pick it up after the service on your way out, out at the information desk and you can just uh, hand in cash for it if you have cash. We ask that you try and keep cash to the specific amount because uh, we don't really have the ability to make change with all of our COVID protocols. Or you want to pay for your book with an e-transfer. Just e-transfer us at give at highwaygospel.ca and in the memo just write book and we'll know exactly what that's for. To dig deeper in following Jesus, I strongly suggest that you participate in a small group. If you are already in a small group, great. Just make sure that you jump right in at the beginning of the campaign. If you're not yet in a small group, then this is the perfect time for you to jump in and test drive one, as I say. Test drive it for the six weeks of the campaign. If you don't like your small group, you can walk away, no questions asked. But I know that most of you who jump in and test drive a group will stay with your group because you will so uh, value the time spent in that small group. All of our small groups will be meeting virtually during the campaign so you can be in a group from the safety and comfort of your own home. If you want to join a group, just reach out to us. You can text us or email us or call our office. I believe the time to do what Jesus is asking is today. This challenge is for you. Whether, you, whether you've been firm in your faith for decades, or you're just new to faith in Jesus Christ, or you're not even sure about God or Jesus right now, this is a time, this is a place for you to jump in. I challenge you, be part of the Red Letter Challenge. In 1992, Gary Chapman wrote a book which has become a bestseller. It was called, or is called, The Five Love Languages. It outlines five general ways that romantic partners can express their love for one another. Chapman called these the love languages, and he outlined five of them which have become popular in this book. If you've never heard of the love languages, let me remind you what the five are. They are acts of service, gift giving, physical touch, quality time, and words of affirmation. 
This book has been used for many years now to help couples understand how they express and receive the language of love. See, it's important that we know how to show love to someone in a way that is meaningful to them. And so we all have different ways of, of our own love languages. And the best thing you can do if you're with your uh, partner is to understand how they receive love and give them love that way it speaks volumes to them. Well, it's similar with God. We need to learn how to express our love to God in a way that God wants us to express love to him. So God's love language, if you would. And God has helped us to understand his love languages by telling us in the Bible how we can express love to him and how we could worship him in a way that's meaningful to him. If you were with us last week, I, I told you that... Uh, I borrowed this quote from Pastor Robert Morris. He wrote, Worship is our response to what we value most. That's what worship is. And it's okay when we have other things that we like and value and cherish, but they cannot become more important than God in our lives. When we flip the tables, when God doesn't take number one priority in our lives and our hearts, that's where trouble comes. That's where we lose the worship of God. Like I told you last week, I've, I've researched a number of uh, authors and writers for this series, but I, I've gleaned largely from Pastor Robert Morris and Pastor Chris Hodges, and I just want to give them a shout out. So this morning, I want to look at God's love languages. And so I would draw your attention to a story that is written in Luke chapter 19. As, as Luke is writing the story of Jesus in this book, he, he comes to a day that might be well known to many people. And we find this story in Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 37. And these are the words that we read. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices. They began to joyfully praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This story is, comes from a story that we affectionately have called Palm Sunday. It's, it's the week, beginning the week as we lead into the final week of Jesus' life, where later that week he would be arrested and then crucified, placed in the tomb and raised from the dead. And, and so this is what we call Palm Sunday. It's Jesus' triumphal entry down the Mount of Olives into the city of Jerusalem. And as Jesus is riding this donkey heading towards the city, we're told that a large crowd of people come and they're happy to see him. And did you notice? They began to joyfully praise God loudly. This was a spontaneous eruption of praise to God. It wasn't organized. There wasn't a ringleader. It, it, it's just these people saw Jesus. They were overjoyed at everything that Jesus had been doing, and they began to praise him loudly. Everybody was having a good time, except, except for the Pharisees, the, the religious people. They were unhappy with Jesus being celebrated. Uh, they wanted to have the worship, the praise shut down. They even said, Jesus, tell them to stop it. And, and there's that famous line, Jesus said, if they won't praise me, the rocks will. So notice in all of this crowd, everybody is happy except for the religious people. Let's look at the book of Psalms. If you were with us last week or you watched last week, um, you know that I told you that the book of Psalms is a book about worship, a book about praise, a book about honoring God. And in the book of Psalms, we find our English word praise. Now, here's what's interesting about our English word praise is, is it's limited in its description of what it means. The Psalms were originally written in the Hebrew text and 
And our English Bible is a translation of the Hebrew text. And when the translators were working with the book of Psalms, every time they came to what we call praise, they came to word and they took the Hebrew word and translated it as praise in English. Now, what we need to understand is this English word praise really comes from one of seven words or meanings in the Hebrew text that describe praise. And in English, we, we don't have those seven expressions of the one word. The Hebrew language does. And therefore, it's always been translated praise. So what I want to do this morning for the next few minutes is take a little bit of time to look at the seven meanings of this English word praise in their Hebrew text that they come from. Because that will give us a bigger and better understanding of, of God's love language of praise. And so the first word I want to draw to your attention is the word Hallel. Hallel means to rave, to boast, to celebrate it. It's kind of got this idea of lively, loud, enthusiastic, noisy, uh, fun celebration of God. Kind of what I picture on that Mount of Olives. As Jesus is coming in, that crowd is praising him. And of course, that's written in the Greek, so we don't know which one. But just the description of it reminds me of Hillel. I mean, it's the opposite of quiet. And so Psalm 35, 18 tells us this. Then I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will pray. I will Hillel you before all the people. Now, you might recognize that word Hillel. It is part and root of our word hallelujah, which means to praise God, to hallel God. In fact, to see how uh, translations could work, I'm only going to do this, this one time here just to kind of set the table for you. But the message takes Psalm 35, 18 and puts it this way. Remember, the word praise there is hallel, and this is what they say in Psalm 35, 18. I will give you full credit. When everyone gathers for worship, when the people turn out in force, I will say my hallelujahs, hallel. See, this word tells us that God wants your passionate praise, your exuberant, fun, loud praise. That's why. Don't have to be afraid that when you're in church, you could be loud and exuberant and worship God. That's okay. God likes that. Second word is the word yada. Yada means to acknowledge in public. It literally means with the hand extended. Um, and it, it does, not the surrender type of worship. That's going to come in another word. But, but a hand extended. I, I think of maybe students in school, you know, when the teacher asks a question and they know the answer. You know those kids. Oh, 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 oh. That kind of exuberance. Better yet, in our Canadian context, when hockey teams are playing hockey and somebody scores a goal, what do the players do? They, they put their hands up in celebration and exuberance, um, acknowledging, yeah, we scored. And that's kind of the picture I have with Yada. Yes, God, you know. Psalm 138 verse 1 says, I will praise Yada. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. We praise God with extended hands of worship because he asks for it. Another word is the word barak. Barak means to bless by kneeling or bowing. So we've gone from exuberance to, to a little more subdued here. Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, barak the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, barak, praise his holy name. It's this idea of bowing down as if we were bowing down to a monarch in, in reverence and respect. And, and that's, that's the picture we have here. So, so notice how even in these first three expressions of praise that God likes, we, we have everything from noisy exuberance to bowing down in reverence before God. And it's all acceptable to God. And that's all, that he, all what he wants Another word we find is this word, zamar. Uh, this is an interesting word. This is a great word, especially for you musicians out there. Uh, zamar means making music to God with stringed instruments. In fact, uh, it, it kind of has the connotation that 
Uh, we, we play the stringed instruments hard. So think of an electric guitar and rocking it out. Yeah, it's loud, it's hard, it's, it's exuberant, it's fun. Zamar. Psalm 92 verse 1 shows us this. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. To play the string instruments loud and hard. And so, yeah, it's great to have some nice acoustic music sometimes, but it's okay to have loud rock type guitar music going because God likes it all and there's nothing wrong with it. Brings us to the next word, which is Shabak, which means to address in a loud tone, to shout. Yeah, you get the idea. Psalm 63, verses 3 and 4 say, Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise, I will Shabak you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up, and in your name, I will lift up my hands. Wow. We can see that God is not opposed to loud praise and worship. Quiet is okay too. He accepts it both, but he, he, he kind of, we have a lot of these words that are loud and exuberance. God likes it when we worship him with everything that we are. And again, here's another sports example for you. When you're watching your team, whatever team, whatever sport it is, when your team is playing well and they're scoring goals and, and you're invested in the game even as you're watching it, I mean, you sit there and you ooh and you ah and you cheer. Well, okay, I do. When my team scores, I sit on the couch and sometimes my family tells me to pipe down. But it's funny because when their teams are, are doing well, they're just as loud as I am. But, you know, uh, and that's, that's kind of what we have here. We're, we're exuberantly involved in it, which brings us to our other expression of praise. It's the word tauda, to lift hands in adoration and surrender. Now, if you've been to church even just a few times, if you've been to Highway or a similar church, you've probably seen uh, an expression like that where people are just worshiping and, and their hands are lifted up and it's an adoration of God. It's a surrender to God for who he is and acknowledging that he is the God of our lives. And, and so this is what this word tada means. It's now notice two of these six words, there'll be seven in all, two of the seven are, are about hands lifted up. It's, it's amazing that God has quite the spectrum from hands to bowing to noisy to quiet. Uh, it's saying to God, I surrender my life to you. I let go of my pride and I allow you to be king of my heart, to be king of my life, to, to allow you to come and take control of my life. I surrender to you. Psalm 50 verse 23 says, whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. All this to bring us to the last of the seven uh, expressions of love to God through worship and praise. And it's a word you may have heard. It's the word tehillah. Some of you were familiar a few years back, I guess now it's almost 20 years ago, we had Tehila Toronto, and, and, and that word, that name came from here, Tehila. It's exuberant singing. It's, it's exuberant singing that, that people could hear and, and people could see. It's Tehila. Psalm 34, verse 1 says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. His tehila, his exuberant singing and enthusiastic, expressive way of worshiping God will always be on my lips. There's nothing wrong with worshiping God in a manner that is energetic and lively. Like I told you last week, if the book of Psalms is a collection of prayers and poems and songs, then maybe the last psalm, Psalm 150, is, is a summation, is a conclusion to all of this. And, and so I draw your attention maybe to a couple of last verses. Psalm 150, verses 3 to 5, as we sum up the book, we read these words. And, and the word praise here is always Hallel, the ver first one we looked at. It says, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp 
and the lyre. The lyre is a stringed instrument. Praise him with the timbrel and the dancing. The dancing. You can dance in church. You can't in COVID, but you can dance in church. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Take a look at that verse for another moment. Do you see all the ways of expressing praise to God? Trumpets, yea for trumpets, right? Trumpets and harps and stringed instruments and timbrels and dancing. Stringed instruments, cymbals. Uh, there's got to be drums in there somewhere too with those cymbals. And so it's, it's okay to worship God and, and to make a joyful noise unto Him. And Psalm 108 verses 1 and 3 remind us this and And I've put some of the context here for you. It says, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will. I will sing and give praise. That's Zamar. Even with my glory. I will praise. That's Yada. You, O Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing praises to Hila, to you among the nations. Notice the words, I will. I will. We need to willingly give to God what God wants. God has told us what he likes when it comes to worship. He has told us the love language of worship that God enjoys. And you'll notice through these seven expressions of praise and worship that it's varied, that it's encompassing, it's it's loud, it's soft, it's it's exuberant, it's 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 quiet, it's expressive, it's noticeable. People notice it. It's diverse, it's animated, it's emotional. It's a surrendered will. See, worship is love expressed to God. Worship is your love expressed to God. As we begin to look at those seven love languages, God doesn't call them that, that's just what I've kind of nicknamed it for today, is those seven expressions of praise and worship, uh, my mind is drawn to something Jesus said when he had been questioned by leaders of his time. And Mark records this uh, encounter this way. Matthew and Mark both write about this in their Gospels. But Mark 12, 28 says these words. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, He asked him, of all the commandments, of which, by the way, the the Jewish leaders had over 600, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Notice Jesus said, love the Lord your God. And we have just looked at seven expressions of worship that which express our love for God. And we take those expressions of worship and praise and we combine them with what Jesus said. And we're told that it's important to love the Lord our God with those expressions of praise, but then to take that and encapsulate it in what Jesus said. And here are the three things that I want us to, to take home today. That we're to love the Lord our God with all your heart and soul. That it's okay to express your affection to God. God wants you to love Him. God wants you to express that love to him. God wants to know that it's okay for you to express it. And so what you might want to ask yourself is, what do I love the most? Who do I love the most? What is sitting, again, on the throne of my heart? What is sitting in first place in my life? What what am I giving my affections to? God wants you to give your affections to him. Jesus also said, love the Lord your God with all your mind. That means we focus our attention on God. That means we think about God when we get up, when we go to bed, and everything in between that. God should not just be something that we think about, you know. Maybe you get up and maybe you read the Bible and, and say your prayers and you go on for the, and you forget God. That's not, that's not what we're talking about here. Jesus is saying, love the Lord your God with all your mind. 
Always have God continually in the thoughts throughout your day. Always decide that whatever decisions you're going to make, want to know what does God say about What does the Bible say about this? What would God's reaction to this decision be? Think about God. Maybe that's where, where Paul writes, pray without ceasing. I don't think Paul meant that we should sit on our knees 24 hours a day and, and pray. I think he has this idea that our mind and, and our attention is always focused on God. Ask yourself, what do I think about most? What do you think about most? Because that's going to give you an indication of where your mind is. And, and Jesus said, love the Lord with all my mind. Where is your, your, your focus? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your strength. It means use your abilities for God. Whatever you do, do it for God. When you go to work, work for God. Paul writes about that. You know, have the workman be worthy of his pay. Whatever you do, do it all for God, whether you're on a volunteer team at the church, whether you volunteer in your local school, whether you're involved in a community organization, whatever you're doing, do it for God. You're doing it, yes, to serve the school, to serve a community, to serve, but beyond all that, higher than all that, you are doing it as an expression of love to God with all your strength, with all your abilities, whatever God has gifted you in, give it back to Him. Ask yourself, what do I do the most? What do I do most? Where am I putting all of my effort and attention? Where am I putting my abilities and my affection? What are the things that I am doing for God? Today we've looked at God's love languages. I, I know the Bible doesn't call it that. Don't, don't, I'm just saying that's a way for us to look at it. Seven ways that we can express our love to God in praise and in worship. And all of that we give God our affection, our attention, and our abilities. The question for you is, am I loving God? Am I loving God with everything that I have? Am I making God number one in my life? Am I worshiping God because of who He is and I'm grateful for Him in my life? Or am I just going through religious motions when I'm with other followers of Christ? Maybe you're watching and you've just been checking out God for a while. You've been watching us maybe for a few months or a few weeks or maybe just today. Uh, and you've not really committed your love to God, your life to God. Maybe you're afraid of what God's going to ask of you. Maybe you think, you know, if, if I decide to follow God, everything that I enjoy in my life and everything that I think is important is going to be gone. I don't think God works that way. He'll remove from our lives the things that are detrimental and hurtful to us, but he replaces them with something much better. What God really re requires from you is that you would love him. And God has told us today how we can express our love to him. Or maybe today you're deciding that you're watching and you're saying, you know what, I need, I need to just go all in. I, I've been walking the fence. I have been toying with the idea. I've been kind of in church and kind of not in church. And, and maybe you're hearing all of this today. There's ways to love God. There's, there's things that we could do to love God with all of our heart and our soul and our mind. And you say, that's what I want to do. I want to go all in. I want to give my life. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Then first, I congratulate you. It's, it's a great decision. And the next thing I want you to know is I want to help you as you begin to walk out a relationship with God and become a follower of Jesus. And so do me a favor and just grab your cell phone right now. Just go ahead and grab it. And I want you to be able to text me a word. And I'm going to give you that word. It's the word love. Text the word love and text it to our number, which is 416-267-1189. Just text love. There's going to be a number of prompts there. Please follow them. This way, once you answer the questions, we will know how we can get back in touch with you.
So if you are interested in maybe following Christ for the first time or you want to rededicate your life to following Christ, just do that. Pick up your phone and text us the word love. And we will be in touch with you. We want to help you as you walk through this journey of loving God and following Christ. Let's pray together. Father, thank you today that we have an opportunity to understand that we could give our love to you in a way that is meaningful to you. Thank you that you love us enough to, to include us, whether it's loud or whether it's quiet, whether it's exuberant or whether it's somber. You include all of that for our sake and for your glory. We thank you today. I thank you for those who have given a decision to become a follower of Christ. Ask you to help them as they begin a new journey with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us at Highway Online today. It's been so good to share this information and, and these words with you. Remember, if this is your first time joining us, again, text the word welcome to the same number, 416-267-1189. Or if you're on our live stream platform, just go to the top right corner and click the word connect with us. There's a link there. Fill out that form. We will be in touch with you. I want to send you a more formal welcome in the mail if you will do that for us. If you live locally, remember that we are open Sunday mornings at 1030. You can join us due to COVID protocols. We do have limited seating. And so according to protocols, you need to reserve your seat. It's free. Just go to our website, highwaygospel.ca. Click the big link in the middle of that front page. It says register here for on-site services and just follow that information. All, we, all you got to do is give your name and an email address. And if you have trouble with that, call our office, 416-267-1189, and we will register you for you. All right. Uh, as you heard at the beginning, I want to remind you to save uh, a few dates. October 6th to the 8th will be three days of prayer and fasting. Uh, our fall campaign is called the Red Letter Challenge, and it's going to start on October the 18th. And information has been out now, and more is coming to you. And next Sunday, if you're going to join us online, we are going to be celebrating communion. So prepare your emblems to celebrate communion with us next Sunday. Thank you for joining us today. We will either see you in person or online next week. Have a great week. Be safe. Bless you.